In Moscow, China's President Xi Jinping and Russia's Vladimir Putin shaking hands and stressing close ties as a three-day state visit gets underway. And this is the first visit by the Chinese leader since Russia invaded Ukraine last year. According to Russian state media, the two leaders met for more than four hours today. China has a vaguely warded proposal to end the conflict in Ukraine, but it stops short of calling for Russia's withdrawal, a key demand of Ukraine and the West. The talks come just days after Putin was indicted for war crimes tied to alleged abduction of Ukrainian children. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken says Xi's visit shows China's intent to provide, quote, diplomatic cover for alleged Russian atrocities in Ukraine. And tonight, for the first time, you will see one attack by Russia under investigation in the Ukrainian city of Azim, an attack remarkably caught on camera. The exclusive report now from CNN's Ivan Watson. From a battlefield in eastern Ukraine, a desperate call for help as a Ukrainian woman pleads for her wounded husband's life. Footage from last June shows the moment when a Ukrainian couple took a wrong turn towards an active front line. Their car came under fire from nearby Russian forces, badly wounding the driver, Valeria Panamarova's husband. I saw his head was injured and immediately began to bandage his head. The incident captured on video by a drone piloted by Ukrainian soldiers and later compiled into a documentary by the Ukrainian director Lubomir Levitsky. I turned it fell on my knees and just screamed with the most agonizing cry. I didn't know whose drone it was, our forces or the enemy. The pilot taped a sign saying, follow me, on his drone, and directed Panamarova to safety. She made the agonizing decision to leave her wounded husband behind. As she followed the drone, Russian soldiers emerged to approach her car. They took her husband, Andriy, and dumped him in a ditch. This is the intersection where that terrible shooting took place in June. The Ukrainian military subsequently liberated the area allowing Ukrainian police to come in and launch an investigation into an alleged Russian war crime. Ukrainian police investigator Serhii Bolvinov says he has gathered evidence to accuse a 26-year-old Russian army officer of the war crime of attempted murder of a civilian. He is a company commander of the 2nd Motorized Rifle Division, 1st Tank Army, Western Military District. We established his identity. For police to work here, sappers first had to clear the area of landmines. Then police conducted forensic and ballistic analysis of the crime scene. Ukrainian police say the Russian troops were stationed here on this side of this wall, and it's from here that they opened fire on the car. Inspector Bolvinov shows me what he says are incriminating telephone intercepts of their chief suspect calling his wife. <coughs> Ukrainian police say the weapon was a 30 millimeter cannon aboard this type of infantry fighting vehicle. Police say they've also tracked down photos of the officer and his wife from their social media accounts. On that dark day, Valeria Panamarova followed the drone to safety, stepping around deadly landmines, until a Ukrainian soldier met her. It was too dangerous for troops to retrieve Andriy Bahamas. Is this where they brought the victim, the Russian soldiers? Uh, that. But that's not the end of Andriy's story. Miraculously, he somehow survived after spending the night badly wounded in the ditch. I felt rain falling. I looked around and realized I was lying in some kind of a ditch. The next day, he limped to safety. It took 30 or 40 minutes. I stopped a lot because I was in a lot of pain. Andrei is still in treatment for multiple shrapnel wounds to the head, chest and spine.
The alleged attempted murder of a Ukrainian civilian at these crossroads, just one of hundreds of potential war crime cases being investigated by police in Ukraine's Kharkiv region. But it's perhaps the only incident that has been so incredibly well documented. Oh, incredible reporting. Ivan Watson joins us now from Ukraine. Ivan, uh, we know the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant for President Vladimir Putin for the alleged war crime of kidnapping children. What other kinds of investigations are Ukrainian police and prosecutors conducting? Well, that's what was so remarkable about this interview with this uh, police investigator. In the Kharkiv region, he is in charge of more than 900 other investigators and says that after every Russian artillery or rocket strike on a Ukrainian town or village, if it's safe, his investigators will go in. They'll collect information and evidence. They'll do the ballistics reports. They'll see the, the damage to infrastructure or to homes. Uh, they'll find out about civilian casualties, and they're collecting cases. He says more more than half of their work right now is collecting cases for potential war crimes prosecution. So it's not just the Ukrainian army that the Russian military is fighting. It is police and prosecutors. And the message they're sending with this report uh, and this potential prosecution is that there is somebody taking names. There's somebody gathering evidence. As we've seen from the ICC, they're issuing an arrest warrant all the way up for the Russian president himself. But you also have police and prosecutors who can figure out individual battalions and brigades on the Russian side and potentially name the officers behind some of these actions and attacks. It will potentially put psychological pressure on these people. We don't know how the final chapter of this war will be written, but somebody is taking note, and, and, and it sounds a powerful message, even if these individuals are for now beyond the reach of Ukrainian law.